What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to our Player of the Week review. We're going to be just taking a quick look at these players because I don't really feel like the Player of the Weeks at the moment. Yes, if you're a newcomer, I keep saying this in every video every Thursday. If you're a newcomer, you downloaded the game a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago, these players are always going to be nice and exciting for you and enticing because you have got, like, you know, already ready-made cards, right? Ready-made cards. Um, you don't need to do anything to them, right? You obviously are able to get your free spin by playing in the event. And of course, they only cost 100 coins. But I feel like that there's a big kind of... Yeah, there needs to be a big change to these, which I'm going to be doing a dedicated video on. But we will do a quick little review of them of players that I recommend if you do spin from. First off the rip, I do like the fact that there is a nice selection of players. I mean, Marcus Lorente, he's a very, very good card. You've got a left back, you've got a slow build-up kind of centre midfielder, you've got Pace and Nico Williams, you've got Bruno Fernandes, who's a very rare centre-forward version of him, you've got Giroud, you've got Stevens, Alexandro, Niang. Firstly, these three players at the top, and I'll include Cruz in this as well, if you have not got another version of Tony Cruz, this guy is going to give you a lot of passing. 97 passing is kind of wasted on him and the rest of the card. He's kind of too slow, too immobile, I would say. Um, they don't do really like justice to these types of cards, especially the fact that Cruz has only got 76 balance and I've never really seen him fall over. Um, type possession is good, ball control is good, his technique plus three is good. Um, and he does have some nice player skills. He has, you know, long range shooting, first time pass, um, first time shot, one touch pass, way to pass, low lofted, true pass, and he has pretty much everything that you could want. But again, he's just a bit slow, you know what I mean? That physical contact and balance for that part of the pitch. He is going to be a little bit wasted. Now, as a, an attacking midfielder, it'll be different, but he doesn't really have the shooting ability then either. So it's kind of a tricky one. Icardi is kind of always been um, a player that... I'll just hide my webcam here, lads, um, just to show you the positions they can play. Icardi has always been one of those players that, yes, he's a fox in the box. I'm going to be bringing some videos on fox in the box very soon because I think they've kind of changed it up a little bit. But he does have good player skills, but I feel at this stage, lads, that literally GP Mbappe... I mean, if you're spinning and wasting coins on a Cardi, trying to get a Cardi, and you've got a 1 in 11 chance of getting him, 90 finishing, 90 attacking awareness is good, but the balance at 76 and the acceleration at 78 will just not cut it past Division 3, unless you're just playing for pure sheer fun, which most people don't play the game for fun anymore. They just play it to win. <laughs> but uh, Alexandro, again, down as a centre-back. He's had some good cards in the past. He actually gets a booster here, uh, the Juventus man. Not a bad card at all, right? Him and Danilo have always been kind of like interesting cards. This is an interesting card. He has blocker interception, aerial superiority and heading. He does have fight and spirit, excuse me, and interception. Um, but I think that's where kind of the good parts of this card stop. With a build-up, he does have big speed. You'll see a lot of the players that they're bringing out now defensively have got good speed. And that's kind of, I think, to quicken up the game a little bit at the back. Because a lot of players at the back now that have low speed do get caught in possession quite a bit. But it's not a bad card at all if you do spin him. And of course, we do have Niang as well, which is literally just a header um, and finishing in the box goal poacher. Got some nice player skills. Super sub and fighting spirit kind of saved this card, I would say. But you can't add anything else onto him, even though he can play left and right wing. That's going to bring us to Stevens and Giroud at the bottom. Not a bad card either. Stevens, he's actually not a bad card, but his acceleration and speed are way below what you need it to be. Uh, his defensively, you know, defensive engagement is only 75, is quite poor. He does have blocker, interception, aerial, and acrobatic clearance. So he's got all the skills, but he doesn't really have the stats, and his player ID is not going to be that good because of that. Giroud, we're going to have a look at him. I know a lot of people like Giroud, Fox in the Box. It will probably be his last card we get here. Super sub, area superiority, and heading, long range shoot, and acrobatic finishing, first time shot, one touch pass. Very good build up uh, center forward. I've actually been surprised at how good Giroud has been. If you do spin one or two and you get him, it's definitely a good return. He's a fine card. Don't mind his acceleration or balance. It's all about just getting the, the ball into the box, Tim, no matter what, you know, in the air or on the ground. We also have Marcus Lorente, one of my favorite players in eFootball 22 and 3. Very, very decent. I mean, speed, acceleration are going to be in the 90s. His low pass is going to be 85 plus, so he hits the threshold. And on top of that, if you're using the likes of Pep or Xabi Alonso, you're going to get the aggression plus 85, which is going to be nice. Tight possession and dribbling going to be plus 80. Balance is the one thing that kills this card. It's definitely not the best version of Marcus Llorente, but he can play everywhere. Look at all the positions he can play, so he's a very useful player if you are starting off. And then, of course, we do have Bruno and Nuno Mendes. Ter Stegen, I'm not even going to waste my bread on this guy, lads. I just despise Ter Stegen in the game, and he never, never, never um, shines for me. But it is a fairly okay card. But, yeah, if I got him, it's an instant release, so I'm being a bit biased there. Bruno as a deep line forward. This is an interesting card with the booster. High kick and power. Nice pass. Curl. Lofted pass. Attack and awareness. Ball control and dribbling. 
I would have liked if they were going to be doing this Bruno card. I definitely would have liked them to, you know, for him to have nice balance. If he had 90 balance, this would have been a very unique card with the aggression, the kick and power. The acceleration and speed wouldn't have been too bad if he had high balance, but he does get a pass and plus three. And obviously he set up the goal uh, for Manu to score the winner in the FA Cup. Marseille turn, one touch pass, heel trick through passing. He doesn't have low lofted though, which I thought he would have. Um, and he doesn't have weighted pass, which again is a little bit of a miss as a passing plus three um, with a deep line forward play style. So it is an interesting choice there as well. I don't really recommend this Bruno card, even though he can play a lot of different positions from, you know, CMF all the way to CF. Um, I don't really recommend this card because of the balance. It just lets it down. If the balance was 85 plus, this card would have been really, really beastly. Uh, and then also we do have Nuno Mendes, who's down as an attack and full back. Obviously, there's an abundance of attacking fullbacks in the game at the moment. Very nice player skills. He doesn't have blocker, which is usually a rarity for attacking full black, full backs. Um, but he does have speed, acceleration, balance, and stamina. And when you are using attacking full backs, lads, right? Uh, attacking full backs are always going to be um, like you do need to be very careful with how you're using them because they just bombard forward, you know. Um, I would like defensive fullback on one wing and then the other attacking fullback on a, on another wing. He can play center back as well. So it's not a bad card. And he does have a lot of nice things about him. But he doesn't have area superiority or heading. He's not the tallest. So if you are going to be playing him as a center back, it is going to be a little bit more difficult to do that with these skills. His player ID is going to be a little bit timid with the height and the weight and the fact that he has only 66 aggression. There's not really that many thresholds being hit in there. Um, tight possession is okay for a CB if you're playing him there. But for a left back, it is going to be a little bit more of a difficult choice, a difficult one. Um, speed, acceleration, balance is always going to be good. He's a running gun. He's kind of like your Roberto Carlos type player. And then Nico Williams won't spend too long on him. He's down as a whole player, but he can only play on the, light, the left and right side of the pitch. Left wing, right wing, left mid, right mid. 92 speed, 93 acceleration. Balance is actually quite nice here. We're going to get that boost with Guardiola or Xabi Alonso. Going to bring it up to around the 90 mark. Dribbling, tight possession, ball control, and loft the pass. Finishing does let him down a little bit, but he has unwavering form, and he's got very high weak foot accuracy. Nice to be able to play from both sides. He also has double touch and soul control, but he doesn't have flip-flops, so you can't give that to him. But he has Marseille turn, scissors feint, first-time shot, one-touch pass, and outside curler with long-range curler. It's not a bad card. Listen, I'm going to be doing a video and a blowout video on what I think needs to be fixed and changed for the player of the weeks for eFootball 2025. I don't think they can continue to do it this way and continue to have the players coming out the same release pattern, the same release thing the whole time because I just feel like that the hype for the player of the weeks is going slowly down and down and down. They either need to have player of the weeks with like one of a kind, rare, unique type cards. Like, you know, why not give Bruno... A 98 overall card here with like 90 balance and 90 finishing. You might say like, oh, that would be too, too much. But I mean, it's either that or not spin for the cards at all. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Like if you had a unique card that is on par with the epics or a little bit on par with the epics, even if it was one in a pack, I think it would add a little bit of shine to it. I mean, you remember when they added that Kevin De Bruyne card back in the player of the week when they first announced the boosters. The boosters are kind of now just not really worth it, you know? But let me know what your guys' thoughts are. I will talk to you later. We will be back streaming very, very soon. Today, uh, we will have already streamed by the time this goes in, but we'll be streaming on Friday as well. So let me know what you guys think of these player of the weeks. I'll talk to you in a bit. Peace. Don't forget to subscribe.